In week five of the video season ticket, it is a time for old friend Spike Dykes and R.C. Slocum to renew that friendship. A crowd of 50,000 plus would crowd Jones Stadium and search skyward for a few more folks to drop in on the festivities. But something was indeed strange as khaki became the order of the day. And make no mistake, on this day, the Aggies' bite would be as bad as their bark as they administered an old-time mugging. All of that on week five of the video season ticket. Welcome to Jones Stadium, everybody. What a beautiful day it was. A full house, lots of activities, and, well, Texas Tech hoping to break into the win column. Let's pick up play on the second play from scrimmage. This is Louis Sheffield, tough yardage up the middle, and he gains six. That moves it to second and four from the Tech 41. Jamie Gill wants to pass, looks, pressure, and he is sacked. And that's something that he would be familiar with before the day was over. That brings on Mark Bounds. He punts and gets away a good one all the way to the Aggie 19. By the way, he punted six times and had a 52.6 yard average. That was Jeff Hume on a nice tackle there. A&M first and 10 from the 35. This is Greg Hill through a large hole up the middle. He gains 11. Three plays later, second and two from the 28. Doug Carter, big gainer up the middle. He's finally tackled by Ben Kirkpatrick after a gain of 11. Two plays later, A&M still has the ball. Hill takes the pitch left side. Matt Wingo, another great game for the senior, number 45 linebacker. Gain of two there. Fourth and six. The Aggies have to kick. Ball is up. It's true, and A&M is on top. 9.34 to go. Three to nothing, A&M. Texas Tech now. This is third and 11. Jamie Go dropping straight back. Look at this. My goodness, over the last two or three years, Jamie Gill certainly has had his share of injuries. On this play, he suffered a badly bruised left shoulder. They think he may be ready next week, but we'll have to wait and see. That brought on Mark Bounds, who had to come in and punt. As we told you, uh, he's leading the nation in punting. This was fourth and 19. He punts. Smith is deep for the Aggies. Smith will stumble, and he's going to be dropped by Tucker right there. That was a 50-yard punt. Let's move to first and 15. A&M with the ball at the 32. Bucky Richardson on the option keeper. Look, he cuts back left, and Brian Dubisky and the other defensive backs are after him. Donnie Brooks finally gets him after a gain of 25. Two plays later, Richardson to pass. He is flushed out, and Ben Kirkpatrick makes the tackle after a gain of one. Third and seven from the 40, Richardson from the shotgun, throwing over the middle, Brown defending there, but wide open is Mitchell, and he gains 39 before he's knocked out at about the one-yard line. On the first play, good defense right there by Texas Tech. Matt Wingo led the charge along with Lissio, Donnie Brooks. Here's the ground level view of it, and he nearly fumbled right there. Great defensive stand by Tech right there at the goal line. But on the very next play, Bucky Richardson says, I'll take this one, and he does. He goes into the end zone, and that puts Texas A&M up 10 to nothing. That at 5.25 left in the first quarter. Robert Hall now in at quarterback, and he's going to pass. He throws along the sidelines. Lloyd Hill has it. That good for a big gain of 33 yards. And uh, Lloyd Hill, by the way, had five catches for 106 yards on the day. But that drive will end as uh, Hall is sacked by Buckley. He fumbles and the Aggies take over. On third and four, Bucky Richardson wants to pass. He's flushed out. And look at this kid scramble. He gains 10 on the play. Two plays later, second and one from the 21. Carter off right tackle. He gains eight. Finally stopped by Steve Carr. 
Second and one, two plays later. Hill will try the left side of the line. Carr and Jackson there for a gain of three, keeping him out of the end zone. But on the next play, Richardson again right in the end zone. And A&M has stunned the Raiders in the first quarter, 17 to nothing. Let's go to second quarter action now. A&M back with the ball, first and 10. Bucky Richardson around the right end, gained of seven. And Richardson was injured on that play and had to go out of the game. That brought in the sophomore quarterback, uh, Jeff Granger. Let's move it to first and five. Carter will be tripped up by Matt Wingo. Watch this. Matt was on the ground, but uh, still mad. Great effort and tackle the ball carrier right there. Great effort by Matt Wingo. Let's move to first and 18. This will be Kent McAfee on the reverse, but uh, good defense by Texas Tech. That is Mike Lissio holding his ground, and the Aggies gain nothing. Second and 18 from the A&M 43. Granger still at quarterback. He will throw over the middle to a wide open Harrison, a duck. He has the ball and holy cow, outraces the Raiders into the end zone, but good news for the Red Raiders. Flag was down holding A&M and they've got to go all over again. Make it second and 34 from the A&M 26. Granger to pass, great, great pressure there by Jackson and Granger throws the ball away, but no flag was thrown. That killed the Aggies drive. They had to punt the ball and Tech takes over. This from the 32. Robert Hall scrambling and boy, boy, can this kid move and look at that hit. We'll show you the replay and what a shot he took to the head. As you'll see right here and would you believe that Texas Tech, wow, after that hit goes to their third quarterback. Jason Clements from New Mexico comes in. He will hand off to Louis Sheffield and Louis will gain four up the middle. Second and 10 from the 44. Ball will be given away to Anthony Lynn, and Anthony's going to gain five on this play, but the uh, Tech drive stalls, fourth and five from the 49. Mark bounds to punt. Smith is deep, and a 51-yard punt as the ball sails into the end zone. A&M takes over at their 20. Richardson, from that ankle injury, is back in at quarterback. He gives to Hill, and, man, another great play by Matt Wingo, gain of four. Let's move five plays later. Second and five from the A&M 37. Hill takes the pitch along the right side, and he's going to be brought down by Dubisky and Gerlich. That after a gain of just one, three plays later from the 49. McAfee will go off left tackle. Pitts and Saul, no gain. More great defense for the Red Raiders. Third and four from the 49. Richardson, option keeper, big gainer, and he's going to be finally, well, maybe he just falls out of bounds over there along the right sideline. Second and eight from the 33. Richardson completes to Mitchell. That for a 28-yard gain all the way to the Texas Tech five. Anthony Wiley finally pushed him out of bounds. And then from ground level, Bucky Richardson wants to throw and then goes into the end zone himself as the Aggies move out to a commanding 24 to nothing lead. Wanted to show you a final play here in the first half. Mark Bounds punting and look at this great, great effort down there by Tucker as he keeps the ball out of the end zone. Raiders take over, just great effort. So Tech didn't give up. Well, that's the halftime uh, score, 24 to nothing. Let's have a visit with Rudy Maskew of the Texas Tech coaching staff. I really feel like being around you guys for a couple of years. This is an incredible coaching staff, isn't it? It really is. We've got some guys that are just, they've been, this isn't their first trip around the block. and. They care about the players we have, and uh, we just try to do everything we can to be a better football team. Where will the folks see you when you're out recruiting? Well, I'll be down in Central Texas and uh, East Texas. I'll be down in Waco and Colleen and all the way over to Lufkin and down to Brenham and to Austin and just all around that Central Texas area. What kind of message do you put out to try to get kids at Texas Tech? Well, I, I think there's not a better representative school of the state of Texas than at Texas Tech, where we've got a large school where the people are friendly. It's probably the only university in the state of Texas that, that just has everything. It has the Texas atmosphere, and it's not too crowded, and it's a kind of a down-home kind of school with a great academic uh, reputation.
Well, let's pick it up with second half action. A&M has added a field goal to move out 27 to nothing, and Robert Hall takes over the offense. He completes to Byron Hooper. Good for a gain of 22. By the way, in the first half, Texas Tech only with about 28 yards total offense. The Aggies had over 200. So you can see there's a big hole to climb out of for the Red Raiders. This is third and nine from the 42. All the pass complete over the middle to Lloyd Hill, the leading pass catcher on the day. Good for a gain of 17. On fourth and nine from the A&M 11. Then Elliott, 28 yard field goal from Hooper is good. There was a flag, now look at this. They took the points off the board. They're going for the touchdown on fourth down. Pass interference on Lloyd Hill there in the end zone. And on the very next play, first and goal from the two, Louis Sheffield breaks that drought for the Red Raiders. Two yard touchdown run. And the uh, Red Raiders are on the board. Lynn Elliott adds the point after. And Texas Tech is within 20, 27-20. That with 6.09 to go in the third quarter. Then Elliott on the onside kick. Look at this. The Raiders going for it. Ball is high in the air. And Scotty Allen has the ball for the Red Raiders. Show you that from the ground level as the Red Raiders celebrate. And look how high this ball will bounce in the air. Wham, about 30 feet in the air. And the Red Raiders have the ball. Let's go to third and 12 from the A&M 22. Robert Hall looking to pass. He will throw near the end zone and just incomplete. And the Red Raiders are turned away. That's, that's kind of the way it's gone all day so far today. A&M has the ball. Second and five from the 25. Hill tries the right side. Fred Petty, gain of zero for the Aggies. Third and five from the 25. Richardson from the shotgun. He throws and the pass is almost picked off by uh, Matt Wingo. Texas Tech takes over after the punt. This is Robert Hall looking to pass. He's flushed out. He runs, get a gain of about five yards. Four plays later, third and 11. Robert Hall to pass, complete over the middle to Rodney Blackshear. And boy, is it good to see this kid back playing football, that for a gain of 16. On second and 10, however, Robert Hall looking to pass. He completes over the middle to Anthony Lynn. Good second effort. The ball is stripped free, and wouldn't you know it, A&M comes up with the football. Let's move it to five plays on the Aggie possession. This is Greg Hill taking the pitch along, along the right sidelines. He cuts back across the field, and good by Greg. He goes in for the touchdown, 42 yards, and the Aggies at the end of three quarters have jumped out to a 34-7 lead. Let's move now to fourth quarter action. This is the Aggies again with the ball. First and 10 from the 49. Mike Lissio with a great, great defensive play there for a loss of one. Two plays later, Richardson to pass. He'll be flushed out. He has the first down, however, however after a gain of 11, pulled down by Brian Dubisky. Four plays later. From the 18, Richardson to pass. Lots and lots and lots of time. Finally, there's Mike Lissio to push him down, but the Aggies got a field goal to move up 37 to seven. That with nine minutes plus a few change left in the ball game. Well, here come the Red Raiders. Robert Hall complete to Vincent Brandon. That good for a gain of 13. Three plays later, third and 17 from the 26. Robert to pass, complete over the middle to Lloyd Hill. That's good for a gain of 17. On the very next play, first and 10 from the 43. Hall again throwing, and there's Blackshear, good for a gain of 11. Let's move it four plays later, third and nine from the 28. Robert is pressured and intercepted. Pat Bates, and uh, so the uh, Red Raiders are stopped at the four yard line. The Red Raiders defense forces the Aggies to punt, and boy, this is good to see. Tracy Saul actually getting to field a punt and uh, he takes the ball uh, up near the 47-yard line. Let's move to second and nine from the 47. Robert wants to pass. He is complete again over the middle to Lloyd Hill, who we told you was the leading pass catcher for the Red Raiders. Over 100 yards catching on the day. That good for a gain of 26 from the 27. Hall to pass, complete again over the middle, this time to Blackshear. That's good for a gain of 12. Well, here comes a weird play, but we'll take the score any way we can get it. Lloyd Hill takes it, second, third, and fourth effort. He fumbles, ball is free. Rodney Blackshear picks it up, jumps into the end zone, and after a little discussion, the Red Raiders were awarded the touchdown, but it was too little too late. Lynn Elliott with the extra point. So that's the final, A&M 37, Texas Tech 14, and some questions 
in the locker room. First half, we just, boy, they took us out of the football game entirely with the line of scrimmage, both offensively and defensively. And when they do that, well, makes it for a long, hard afternoon. It really does. I, I knew A&M was good. I knew they were talented, but I did not know they were quite that strong. I really didn't. They, uh, they, they're good. The, uh, you know, we came back in the second half. We were down 27 nothing to half. We came back in the second half. Uh, we resp- responded pretty good. In fact, it was 24 nothing to half. I beg your pardon. Came back and uh, and got on the board 27 7. On side, kicked it, got the ball, moved down. And now we've got a chance to get back in the game, really get back in the game in a solid manner. And we just couldn't quite get it done. And, uh, you know, we go miss a field goal, we get a penalty, we kick it again, we miss it again. And uh, and I think that's pretty deflating when that happens. And uh, it takes a lot of wind out of your sails. And, and uh, you know, we turn right around and we, we play them pretty good and we've got them stopped. And so, lo and behold, we may have one more opportunity and we have a late hit over out of bounds. And, uh and uh, you can't you can't win football games that way. You really can't. It's it's hard enough anyway. But uh, but we just we managed to shoot ourselves in the foot a little bit, and uh, and that's that's tough. Yeah, it really was. It was a tough game all around. We played a great Texas A&M football team today, and uh, they capitalized on our errors. We didn't capitalize on theirs. It sounds a little bit redundant, but that's the way the, the ball game came out this week. Also, but sometimes you know I'm kind of happy to play, but then I'm kind of not feeling too good he's hurt but then I wonder what happens if I get hurt you know because you know as a possibility I could get hurt so I just try to keep a positive head and uh, go in there and try to do my best. And what, what was the game plan you know when you guys did get behind uh, you know what what all could you do out there I guess? Well when we got behind most we could do was throw um, we wanted to keep them off balance keep a lot of different sets keep them rotating people maybe we could catch them uh, in something different but uh, that was mostly the game plan. Yeah, yeah, it was a very disappointing loss. You know, we came out and we were, we were. I thought we were ready to play, and uh, I don't know what happened. I think they just took took the wind out of our sail. You know, we we're they got 17 points on the board before we know what to do. You know, and when you're down like that, you know, it's kind of hard to get momentum back. Yeah, well, the reason the defense was on the field all day is because you know we we just didn't do our job. Our job is to go out there and play three plays and make them punt and. We weren't able to do that, and you know we need to get the ball back to our offense, and we couldn't do that today. We couldn't capitalize on some situations, but uh, for us to win a football game offensively, we've got to control the football and be able to run it, and we haven't been able to do that. And it's going to be tough and until we establish the running game. I was talking to some people earlier in the week. It's going to be tough for us, and that's what we couldn't do. So. What kind of problems did they give you? I mean, they did seem that big, but I mean, they were just quick. They were probably the quickest team we faced all year. Their defensive linemen moved well. Uh, we knew what they were going to do. They didn't twist that much in our, our run protection, run blocking, but uh, we we couldn't execute. And uh, if we, you know, one player may break down on one play, and then he may not. And five, ten plays later, someone else is going to break down, and that's just been our problem. We haven't been able to execute completely and be consistent. Well, we just went out there and we didn't get the things done we needed to get done, and. Uh, A&M got the momentum, and we never quite got it back. Uh, before the game, we were watching you, you know, taking your practice kicks and stuff. Uh, what's, what was going through your mind? What, did you feel comfortable today? Uh, and then after, you know, you had them field goals that you missed, how did you feel? Well, it was a, it was a perfect day today, and, and uh, it was just a great day to play football, and I felt really good about the game going into it. And we stumbled a little bit at the beginning, and we never quite got back on our feet. And then uh, we missed a couple of scoring opportunities, and that, that haunted us the rest of the day. Uh, they just came out and out executed us. You know, it's always a physical ball game when you play a m and their linemen just seem to to get up on, on us up front. And uh, you know, we played hard, but it, you know, with with Greg Hill behind there and the line they have, you know, they're a hard offense to stop, and we we just didn't stop them at all. I was talking to Tracy earlier. It seemed like you and, and him were making a lot of tackles up back, back in the in the, in the field. Uh, how do you feel about that? Uh, what was going on out there? It just. Uh, you know, our our defense we're we're a lot smaller than most people, and uh, we try to use our quickness. But on you know, on some teams like that where they just have overwhelming size and uh, strength and ability, you know, it, it's hard to play against those kind of teams. And you know, we gave it our best shot, and uh, I thought we were ready for the game, but uh, just things kind of fell apart, and we couldn't get put the pieces back together. Well, you, you know, and being number three, you never hope that you get out there. You, you hope that if if you get out there, you're way ahead or something like that. And uh, 
But I just kind of, it's, it's my job to stay ready just in, in case anything happens. And, and Jamie went down, and I don't really know what it is. I hadn't, I hadn't talked to him about what happened to him. But, and then after that, it's just you're, you're one play away, so you just got to stay ready. And, and it was exciting, but I just, you know, when you lose, it's, it's hard anyway for everybody. Oh, I don't know. I, I've got a lot to learn, you know, being young and everything, and it's it's kind of fun to play your first college game and against Texas A&M and everything. But uh, we've got a long way to come, you know, as as far as offense goes. We need to score more points and and we need to get things going. And and it's just I I don't know. I think maybe some little things and and we'll be all right somewhere down the line. I don't really think anybody's ready to give up and. Uh, I think we'll be ready next week against SMU. Uh, I think our defense started to wear down towards the third and fourth quarter, but we came out the second half ready to get after it, and we started getting some momentum behind us on a touchdown, onside kick, but um, we, we didn't play good all, around, all the way around. Uh, talking about momentum, uh, talk a little bit about the onside kick that you recovered. Well, um, we thought since we're kicking from the 50-yard line, we have a chance, even if we didn't get the ball, that they have it at least on the 40-yard line. But we're fortunately to get the ball. They were doing the right things on defense. You know, they were stopping us. They were blitzing different people and kind of keeping us offset and confusing us a little bit. They did their job. They just didn't seem to execute. Talk a little bit about your passes that you caught. How did it feel to finally catch the ball again? Yeah, it felt pretty good. You know, I, I didn't feel like I was 100% because a couple of times I got, you know, like before I caught passes, I would go down field and block, and I would kind of hurt my knee. Well, hitting the turf and it's just got to get used to that contact again. How's Jamie Gill? Jamie's okay. Jamie's got a bruised shoulder and hopefully he'll be back next week. Uh, it's not broken. They've x-rayed it and all that turned out good. So uh, hopefully he won't be out too long and uh, in the near future he'll be, uh, you know, he'll be percolating right along. I hope so anyway. The, uh, took a good lick. I tell you, he really did take a good lick. And the, the rush that, that old, uh, A&M's got is awful tough. I'm telling you, they've got some great rushers, and, uh, and we had a hard time protecting. And it was just a uh, unfortunate. But you know, the guy got loose and uh, got Jamie from the blind side, ran his shoulder in the ground, and uh, I'm just glad it wasn't hurt any worse than it was. Did your heart go in your throat when Robert Hall then went down, yeah. and, you, and you had to go to Clemens? Yeah, that's you know that's you always say what next and. Uh, Oh, Jason went in and did a good job. I'm proud of Jason Clements. That's pretty hard, uh, pretty hard place to get your wings, I guess, out against A&M. And uh, you know, oh yeah, and he responded pretty darn good. I'll tell you, he really did. And uh, that's what it's all about. The I guess the the sad part is the fact that that like I said in the third quarter when we had a chance to get back in the game, we our crowd was great. You know, we got everything going. We got some momentum. We finally got a little. Uh, you know, we got some life, and you say, well, here we go. This thing could get interesting, and uh, and the Aggies just didn't let it happen, I'll tell you, and I, and I commend them for it. I, you know, it's uh, you can talk about losing all you want to. Somebody wins, and they won, and uh, they did a lot of good things out there today, and they've got a good football team, and they did not make many mistakes, and uh, they've got good athletes that played hard and played together, and, uh, and they beat us, and so I commend them, and uh, I just hope that, that our – you know, I hope that the fat lady hadn't sung, I guess is what you're saying. I hope that uh, if you're not careful, you go through, you get to one and four, and uh, and there's no way that you can make that good. That's a bad deal. And uh, But there's six left, and, and the thing that you can't do is you can't just say, uh, you know, it, it's all over with. We've, we've got to really, really do a great job, or we'll lose to SMU next week. They've got to be licking their chops and in Dallas and say we're playing Tech next week and boy we've got a chance to get in the winning in the winning bracket and uh, here's a team we can beat and I can understand them feeling that way we're gonna have to play like crazy and uh, but I think our guys will I really do we've got a bunch of good people on this football team they're really dejected right now and, I, and that bothers you of course it wouldn't it would bother you if they weren't dejected but uh, we just can't labor on A&M very much longer we really can't we've got to try to, to pick up the pieces and uh, cinch it up another notch, circle the wagons up tighter, whatever you say, and uh, and get ready to play because of the fact that we've got a lot of football teams left that are going to be about as good as A&M on our schedule, and so uh, we better get ready to play them. Ended up on a positive note. Nice to see Rodney Blackshear back. 
Oh, yeah, it really was. I thought Rodney and Lloyd Hill both played well today, and uh, we had some guys play good. We really did. I, I was pleased with the way we came back out after the half because at the half, uh, up until the half, we've not we've done nothing, absolutely nothing. They came out and responded favorably, and, and that's encouraging. Uh, that's not the – I'm not candy coating losing. You know, we lost, and we uh, – we really got dominated in that football game. But still, uh, it wasn't all bad. There were some good good signs. And uh, hopefully uh, hopefully we'll we'll respond very favorably and you'll see a better football team next Saturday. See you in Dallas. You bet, Eddie. Thank you. We'll see you in Dallas. 